Yeah, we were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yep. That's just being a sandwich. That's just basketball. You're know. welcome. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Freshwater Ministry. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's great to be with you today. Jesus is Lord. Amen. It's always nice to be able to praise him, give him all the glory, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glad to see you all coming in. Amen. amen. I know we're probably missing Angel today. Is she uh, home or hospital? Where's she at? Angel. She's home now. She's home. Amen. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, okay, just a moment. Um, I just want to apologize ahead of time. The change in weather has uh, our allergies going. So Pastor Cohen and I are, are sniffling a little bit, coughing. Other people are doing the same thing, just allergies, the rain, get things moving. So bear with us today. You know, you got a prayer request to yeah, my aunt Edith is on her deathbed. Aunt Edith? Yes. Aunt Edith, okay. Aunt Edith, all right. And then TJ is going to get a scripture ready. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glory and honor, Father God. We enter into your courts today with thanksgiving in your presence. With praise, Father God. We've come here to glorify you and magnify you, Father God. We come here with many requests on our hearts, Father God. Sister Edith, Father God, you know her situation, Father. She's in your hands, Father God. We commend her unto you, Father God. Heal her on this side or the other side, Father God. But we know, Father God, that you, you have her. <coughs> Father God, we pray for her. Sister Angel right now, Father God, who had an asthma attack, Father God. We ask for healing, Father God, in the lungs. Strengthening in the lungs, Father God. Hallelujah. We pray for Sister Crystal who's at work today, Father God. Give her strength, Father God, to carry through today. We pray for Pastor Corwin who's dealing with allergies this morning. For all of those here who are dealing with allergies and all those who are watching. Father God, you know the ailments of our bodies, the afflictions of our mind, Father God. Father, we ask that you touch us. Each and every one, Father God. Father God, we pray for the bishops of this house. We pray that they, as they minister your word today, Father God, that it be powerful, that it be direct, that it may be effective. Father, this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. But more importantly, Father God, this, this is where we come to worship. Where we come to lift up your name, Father God. We come to praise and honor and glory, Father God. We come to magnify the name of the Lord. We come to honor you, Father God. Yes, Lord, we've come here to worship today, Father God. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. Your word says, no weapon formed against us to prosper, Father God. We're under attack, Father God, but it's not going to prosper, Father God. We have strength, trust, and belief in you, Father. Today, Father God, touch your people, Father God. Touch them mightily, Father God. Hallelujah, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And everyone said, Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, saints. Uh, how's everybody doing this morning? God is good. Um, today's scripture is in Psalms 56, 3 through 4. Psalms 6, 56, verses 3 through 4. And when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I have put my trust, I shall not be afraid. Yes. What can mere man do to me? Yes. That is today's scriptures. 
Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. May the Lord have a blessing in hearing and doing unto his word. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, uh, I don't know how we're going to do, but I know we can do. Amen. 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 So right now we're going to have Pastor Corwin do. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to try to help him a little bit, but we'll see what happens. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, testify. <laughs> Praise Jesus. We thank you, Lord, my God. You know, we have a lot to be thankful for. I mean, we, we live in a kingdom that, that has power and authority, has power and given us authority to walk. Amen. We, have, we live in a kingdom where we don't have to fear what this world can do to us. All we have to do is stay the course unto God, the author and the finisher of faith. We just got to look to him. Because he's able to do it. He's above all that we may think for us. So today we just come before the Lord. Let's enter into the courts. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. If you're able to stand, please stand with me this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. We'll let you know.
I'm sorry. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> you thought I was being smart out. I was being smart. <laughs> Amen. Got you there. Praise the Lord. Everybody was getting mad at me, like, no, I don't know. No, it's the first time this week, you know. Unless you got up this morning and started reading the Bible. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. I know I did. But that, you know, it's part of the lessons. Hallelujah. Okay. We're on that one there. Hallelujah. This is not time to give up, even though you're not feeling good. Nope. It's not time to take that last breath. You have more assignments to do. You're not all done yet. Yes. It's time to rise up. Rise up. Put your foot on that devil. I'm all out. And be like a good soldier and start marching. But when the saints go marching in, that's what we're, that's what we're working for. Drink me into his courts with thanks. Give me into his presence with praise. <clears throat> but it's not time. Stop playing with the bird. It's not time to give up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ooh, yeah. Jesus. Bye. I can preach on distraction. Come on, Pat. Here we go. go <laughs> we have a bird in here. We're trying to get him outside. This is for all you who are watching. You know, every so often we get a bird in the warehouse that gets into here. He's just having a good old time. We're going to get him saved. We're going to throw him on the grill and get him cooked. Wow. <laughs> He's going to have two choices. <laughs> Live, life, okay, or die. It's kind of like what we got. We have a choice to make, you know, to choose life. <clears throat> Amen? We have that choice to choose life. We, we can, we can uh, you know, or we can choose death. That's our choice. So today, maybe that bird, that's his choice today, too. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. <sighs> If you can't walk, you can dial a phone. If you can't dial a phone, you can text somebody. And above all of that, if you can't do anything else, you can pray. Because prayer covers a multitude of sin. Prayer answers all things. And God speaks to us through our prayers. We must always remember that if we fail and everything else, there's been people on their deathbed, my mother and others. All they can do is pray. That's it, just pray. Talk to Jesus. Tell him about your sorrows. He'll answer by and by. Talk to Jesus. But you gotta know the voice of Jesus. You gotta learn the voice of Jesus. The only way you learn the voice of Jesus is talking to him. And what? Listening. Because he will talk to you. Excuse me. Go ahead, buddy. <coughs> he will talk to you in the midnight hour. He will talk to you when the sun comes up. He will talk to you when that sun's going down. He'll talk to you at noontime. He'll talk to you at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 7 o'clock in the evening. Doesn't matter. He'll talk to you anytime. And he's always waiting to talk to you. Because he loves you. <laughs> I'm going to kill the bird in a minute. Put him on the grill. Get the coals hot. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Father God, we come before you today, Father God, to honor and glorify you, Father God. We come to praise you. We lift up your name, Father. You are a God who gives us lessons. Then inside the lesson, you give us another lesson that we may learn 
and keep learning. Yeah. That we may keep seeking and also keep asking questions. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we have not because we ask not. Right. We don't understand stuff it's because we haven't asked for understanding. Lord, guide this word this day, Father God, as it goes forth, Father. That you, Lord, will be magnified, glorified, <coughs> lifted up, praised and honored. There are so many weapons out there being formed against your, your, your family, your body. It's amazing, Father God, that we're still standing. But we're still standing because of you. We have a rock that we can stand on. We are sheltered by your wings. We are covered and held tight in your hands, drawn close to your bosom. It is your strength that sustains us. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall not fear no evil. For thou art with me, that rod and thy staff that comforts us. Lord Jesus, we desire your presence today, Father God, for healing, for impartation, for your love. We come today boldly before the throne of grace because you have ripped that veil away and made available to us to come to you. Lord, what a day this is, Lord. What a day this is. Hallelujah. We give to you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We have your Bibles today, or your phones, or your tablets, whatever you have. Turn to 1 Kings 18. We'll start with 21. We're going to stay in Kings, but we'll be going to hit some verses here. Need more coming for us? We got another one right here? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So, just know we're going to stay here at 18 and maybe bounce to 19 if we get that far. Amen. Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long? Will you hesitate between two opinions? I was talking about the bird. Uh, 21. Sorry. I was talking about the bird having a choice of life and death, making a choice. The bird can't make a choice. Not really. But you and I can make a choice. So Elijah says here, came near to all the people and said, how long will you hesitate between two opinions? When are you going to make up your mind? When are you going to make a choice and hold to it? Why do you keep flip-flopping back and forth and round about with every wind of doctrine that comes along? Why aren't you fastened in my word and understand what my word says? That's what I see there. When I see two opinions, two opposing thoughts, there can only be one that's correct. There can't be two correct thoughts or opinions outside of God. There can't be. Now there's some good answers for a lot of things. Good answers. And they're right answers. But when it pertains to God, he is the only one that has the truth. He is the only one that is the way. He is the only one that is the life. How long will you hesitate between two opinions? How long will you listen to this person and that person? 
this doctrine or that doctrine? Yes. How long will you listen to that president or that other president? How long will you choose between two evils for calling it good? How long will you choose to be good and, and still do evil? All these things, we have different opinions, different ideas, and different doctrines that we develop. <coughs> Excuse me. How long will you hesitate to say yes, Lord, Whoa. and stay the course? To choose God, knowing that he is the only way. The only way. There is no other way. Uh -huh. If the Lord is God, follow him. If it be Baal, follow him. Make up your mind. Because you're not doing yourself any good. If you're going to serve evil, serve evil. Don't make believe that you're going to go to church and get all this all going on. No. If you come to church, if you come to Christ, if you come to God, and you choose Him, choose to do good. Choose to be live a righteous life, a holy life, a sanctified life. But you notice here that in this verse, it says here, but the people did not answer him a word. <laughs> they didn't answer him a word. I don't know what to do. You got Jezebel over here. My Lord. You got the prophets of God. She just killed those prophets. But you got Jezebel over here. And her husband. The king. I don't know what to do. So I'm not going to say nothing. I bet y'all be okay if I don't say nothing. I bet y'all be okay if I don't do nothing. I bet you're okay if I just sit behind and say, yes, yeah, okay, okay, quietly. I bet that'd be all right. <laughs> the people did not answer him a word. Sometimes when you ask people questions, they get that blank look on their face. Duh. Because they don't have an answer. They don't know what to say. Thank God for preachers. They've always got an answer. <laughs> Amen. No, no, they don't. No, I don't. Okay? Only Christ has the answers. But I can give you an opinion. But how long ago between two opinions? And see, you're right back to where the man interferes with everything God wants to do. between two opinions. Sit down a fence post. Wait for Humpy Dumpy to come along. So when you fall off, you see you put the pieces back together. How long will you be in the, those two places? How long will you be undecided? How long will you say, I love God, but then you go and do whatever you're doing? How long are you going to do that? Stuck between two opinions. Hesitant to say yes, Lord. All the while, licking over that candy machine, going like, mm, that chocolate looks really good. I'm going to have some of that chocolate. God says, no, you don't need the chocolate. But it looks really good. For Brother Edward, he liked to have a pizza, a real pizza. Just a real pizza. It'd make him sick. It'd be too much for his body, because his body's different. For my body, it'd be another couple pounds. And not good for me. But you see, there again, we're stuck between two opinions. What I'd like to do, and what I should do. Or what I'm supposed to do. Or what he's called me to do. Because uh -huh. I sure do like pizza. Now we, we had some cheap pizza the other day, some cheap pizza. And then we went and we bought another company. I'll, I'll call them out, Burroughs. Oh man. My wife and I said, this is the best pizza we ever had because we got eat, so used to eating the cheap pizza that when you got a good one, <laughs> like, all right, here we go, let's dive in. Uh -huh. you know? Let's have that extra piece. 
It tastes that good. Sometimes you make tuna fish salad. Man, sometimes you make it, it's a little bit soupy. Yeah. Why? Because sometimes it's a little bit different. Every time I make my chili, I make it the same way, but sometimes it's just a little bit different. But my God is not different. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I can trust in him. I can believe him. When he says something, that's it. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. I almost got that bird going by. I almost got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> He's doomed. He stays in here. Hallelujah. But I'm trying to tell you, we, the, we got, for, him, for the bird here, for example, we got the door open. Excuse me, please. We got both doors propped open so he can go outside. So he has to, so he has to, what? I closed them. Oh, you closed them? I just became a lawyer. We had, we had the doors open. Okay? So he could go outside. But he goes down the hallway here, goes down through the door passageway there, and he goes to the right. The doors aren't open there. He won't turn to the left. He goes over to the left. He sits on top of the windowsill, the door sill. Because he doesn't know how to get out. Some people don't know how to get out. They're stuck where they're at. They, they have no answer. They can't answer the man of God. They can't give an answer because they're stuck. This is not my message, but it's where God's taking me. So we're not, we're, we're stuck here. <laughs> In God's word. Amen. You see, we have the ability to make choices. We have been given what? Free will. And because we have free will, we can choose in this day in whom we're going to serve. Evelyn, we go open the doors up. That, give him a chance to get out. Please, thank you. Yes. That's okay. He'll go back and forth until he figures it out, hopefully. So Elijah came near to the people. The preacher, the, the prophet came near. And on his heart, how long, he looked at them, how long will you hesitate? You have allowed Jezebel and her husband to kill the prophets of God. They killed the prophets of God. How long are you going to sit and do nothing? When good people do nothing, evil prospers. In this nation today, we have exactly that. This nation is prospering in evil because the good people aren't doing nothing. They're not saying nothing. They're not answering the call of the Lord. So like when Elijah here said to him, you know, What are you going to do? How long are you going to hesitate? He was really prophesying in their life, saying, if you don't make a decision, guess what? You'll perish. <clears throat> because later on in the Bible, the Bible says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. If we don't seek the Lord for understanding, if we don't get understanding in the Lord, we will fail. God won't fail. It's just that we made the decision not to follow him. We made the decision not to choose him. Elijah goes on in verse 22. He says, Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. Now I start reading that I think, kept thinking about, okay, Jezebel and her husband killed all of those prophets, right? But Elijah here is saying that I am alone. I'm left. I'm alone. The people would not answer. No one stood up for Jesus or for God, okay? No one stood up. They did not answer. 
They chose to be neutral. So he felt all alone. He felt abandoned. You know, here all prophets that he knew, men of God, maybe some women of God, were killed because they stood for the kingdom. So he comes into the sea and he's now the only one that he knows is still standing. The light said to be alone. I am left a prophet of the Lord. Baal, but Baal, <coughs> excuse me, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. And I'm only but one. He said there's 450 prophets. That time he must, you know, like, what am I gonna do? What's gonna, you know, what's gonna happen here? Here, feeling all alone. I'm married, but sometimes I feel alone. My wife is married, but sometimes she feels alone. I can speak to it because I know her and she knows me. And I believe that sometimes you all feel alone. You feel abandoned, no one to talk to, no one's going to listen to you. It's sad. It's sad that, that we don't turn to our Savior. I mean, really, that's, that's where we should turn to. We should turn to Jesus. But we're sitting there all alone. TV's blaring. Gospel music, whatever, whatever it is, but you feel all alone. You're all alone because you're not taking time with Jesus. You see, Jesus is our healer. He, he corrects all of our issues and problems. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about my sorrow. Hear my faintest cry. Answer by and by. He'll always answer. He'll always be there for you. He says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Uh -huh. So why not utilize the lifeline that you have? You know, there, there's a show, I don't remember the name of the show, but they used to give you lifelines. Okay? And what they would do is you'd be doing, playing part of the game and then you could make a choice. Oh, something for a million dollars, something like that. Okay, a game. And they'd give you three or four lifelines. And you'd call someone up for a lifeline or you'd ask the audience to answer the question, okay? Uh, um, who wants to be a millionaire? Was the name of the show. Okay? So they had lifelines. You've got a permanent lifeline that you can always go to. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Okay? That's all you got to do. When you're going through some things, call him up. But here's the man of God. Elijah was talking to the people, saying, look at you know what? Why are you hesitant? Don't you know that there's a God that created you, uh -huh. that gave you life, and that he has an answer for you? Don't you know that all those prophets that died, didn't, don't let them die in vain? Don't let them die in vain. And they didn't. But as a man's point of view, as someone looking at human circumstances, you're not standing up for, for God. You didn't tell them, don't kill those men. You didn't stand in the gap for them. Instead, you let them die. Now you're being silent. We have people around the world passing away, dying, martyr, martyrdom every single day. Every single day. People are dying. <coughs> and where's the church? Where's the body? Well, we're being hesitant between two opinions. The two opinions are this. The flesh and what? The spirit. That's the problem and issue. Which one controls your life? Because if it's the spirit, you will not walk in fear. If it's the flesh, you will always be in fear and doubt. Always searching and never coming to an understanding. But 
If you're walking in the spirit, Amen. hallelujah. Come on. Amen. If you're walking in the spirit, man, what should I fear? I have to, I don't have any fear. Fear not. For the Lord, the Lord God is with thee. Fear not. You know? But no, these people with opinions, okay, or, or, or a lack of opinions, or an inability to make a decision because they were living in the flesh and not looking to God, the Creator. 450 prophets died, put to death, men of God. To a lot of people, especially at that time, a lot of people. Drop down to verse 26. Here Elijah got really bold and he challenged Baal and the prophets of Baal. So we pick up the story here. Then he took an ox which he was given them and they prepared it and called it on the name of Baal. Now as I come into the story here to get you caught up on the story is that he told them that we're going to talk to our gods. I'm going to talk to my God. You're going to talk to your God. If your God can answer you and start a fire and do all these things, then we'll choose your God. But if it be my God, <coughs> I want to preach hard today. I can't. <laughs> oh, Jesus. If it be my God, and he answers, guess what? You got to serve him. Forget about your opinion. Forget about you, your idea of what you should do. Just know that he will show himself, and when he shows himself, you will bow down to him. So verse 26 here. Then they took the ox, which was given them, and they prepared it and called it the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, Baal, answer us. He didn't answer. Now you gotta understand, they took this ox, they built a fire, wood, put him on top of the wood, and Baal had to start the fire. Okay? Baal had to start the fire. If you read through uh, uh, tw 21 through all the way down to 26, you'll see this, that Baal had to start the fire, or when it came time for Elijah, God had to start the fire. This was the miracle, the signs and wonders that needed to be done to get people's attention. Today, we get all these movies with all these special effects. We think nothing of miracles. We don't. We see all these wonders, wow, wow. You know, we saw Superman fly through the air. We didn't see no strings, no nothing. We just saw him flying through the air. We saw explode, we saw death, we saw him come back to life, all these kind of things. So we begin to think about nothing about it. It's kind of like young people today playing their games. Those games are killing everybody, you know. And then so it's nothing to them. Life means nothing to them. They go out and kill people in the streets. Oh, you can't tie those two together. Oh, yes, I can. Because you're doing something that's affecting your brain, the way you think. Can I get some more Kleenex, please? Both of us. Just bring me a box, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm over here sniffling away. Amen. I have a tiny keyboard there. Okay, excuse me for a moment, please. Lord have mercy. Praise. 
I will not be defeated. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. All right, so here goes. <clears throat> oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no voice. No one answered. And they leaped about the altar which they had made. Oh, look, I got to stop right here. I love praise and worship. I love dancing to the Lord. I love raising my hands and praising Him. But when we're watching TV and we're watching a Christian program and you start watching what they're doing at some church, sometimes you have to shake your head like, where is God in this? They're down there twerking. They're down there gyrating, doing things that the world does, that you do in clubs. You know, I don't feel the Spirit of God. I don't hear the Spirit of God. I don't see the Spirit of God. What I see is a bunch of people sometimes just worshiping out of their flesh, thinking that they're doing something right. Because no one's brought them correction. No one's brought them direction. They're out there bouncing around like it's free for all. That's what it is. It's free for all. Like I said, I love dancing for the Lord. David danced. I love lifting my hands and praising him. Hallelujah. Give him all the praise and all the glory. Shouting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I could do it today, we would have been doing it. I had it, I had it. it was in me today. Amen. Okay, you know, as long as it's done correctly, as long as it's done in order of the kingdom of God, as long as the Spirit is moving you, praise God, let the Spirit move you. But I was stand up here and all you do is like, mm, that's bad breath. You know, these pre preachers that blow along the crowd and the crowd falls over. Okay? Now you can find a scripture. You can find a scripture in the Bible that talks about he blew on them. Jesus and Matthew. He blew on the disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. Okay? It's there. It's in the Bible. But you can take that one scripture... And you can take it back out of context and try to use it for your own glory and your own power. Your own, you know, making yourself self-important. Okay, back to where I was going. I had to get a little side note there. Amen? I digress. Hallelujah. But there was no voice. No one answered. And they leaped about the altar which made, which they had made. And it came about noontime. And Elijah mocked them and said, call out with a loud voice. I don't mean to yell too much. I'm sorry, but call with a loud voice. <laughs> Make a loud noise. Make a joyful noise out of the Lord. Hallelujah. You just, that's okay. You can just go ahead and praise him. You, can, you know, praise him in your own way right now. That's fine. Now, when I come in to praise God, I'm coming in with the excitement of the Holy Spirit moving in me, okay? I believe it. Amen. And it's not going to be something of silence, but it doesn't have to be something screaming at the top of my lungs. My God is not deaf. Okay? He's not deaf. He can hear. So when you when you go, you can either shout, or you can hallelujah, praise the Lord. You just give it a regular, but come on with authority, with power, okay, which are established in the kingdom of God. But here, Elijah was mocking them. Come on. So cry out with a loud voice. <coughs> Come <on>. Excuse me. <coughs> For he is a God. Uh -huh. Either he is occupied or gone astray. Or is he on a journey? Uh -huh. Perhaps he's asleep and needs to be awakened. Shout unto the Lord. Shout louder. Come on. <laughs> Did he hear you yet? Did he respond yet? Did 
Did he start that fire? Man, that guy's getting pretty stinky up there by itself. You got to cook it, otherwise it's going to rot. Where's your God? I can hear Elijah. Come on, where is he? Why isn't, why isn't he responding to you? Yeah, he's on vacation. Oh, well, you know, God's got to take some time off now and then, you know. They were so upset. Listen, but here's what they did. Listen to this. All right. Verse 20. 28. And so they cried with a loud voice. We're going to show him. And then they cut themselves. He's not here yet. So I'm taking my and I'm going to cut myself. I'm going to mark myself all up. Why? Because he's going to see the blood and he's going to come and he's going to answer. He's going to see them sacrificing my flesh for him. And he's going to come and he's going to answer. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Cut themselves according to their customs with swords and lances until the blood gushed out on them. Oh my God, you know, they couldn't get a hold of their God. Where is he? Why hasn't Baal answered? Yeah. When midday had was passed, they raved until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Man, it's time now. We're supposed to be eating right now. <laughs> We're supposed to be partaking. Our God should have had this this ox already cooked and ready to go. But there was no voice. Oh, Jesus. No one answered. Uh -huh. No one paid attention. And then Elijah said to the people, come near to me. So all the people came near to him. You see, now everything was on the line. They had watched the dancing. They had watched the cutting. They had watched the yelling and the screaming. Baal, answer us. Yeah. Not a beep. Not a cloud being moved in the sky, I don't think. I think it just sat there. I think that the wind stopped. That there was no response of any sort because God was not going to allow Baal to have any moment, any moment in his glory. You cannot have glory in God if you're not walking with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah said to all people, come near me. So the people came near him. Look at that, you know. It's like, okay. <laughs> he failed. <laughs> that ox over there, it's rotten. It's getting stinky. He's been out all day. The meat start to turn. No fire. No nothing. No nothing. Nothing, nothing. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, the Lord which had been torn down near you get this, okay? Up here, at the beginning, they had an altar. Okay? They had an altar. But during all this stuff, it got torn down. Why? Because the prophets of Baal thought they were going to be victorious. They thought this was going to be okay. Elijah took 12 stones. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. According to the number of the tribes, the son of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel, Israel shall be your name. So with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two measures of seed. Now, if you know anything about farming, you can't put rows right side by side. They have to be spread out. So one row would be here. Then one row would be here. And you have a walkway in between. 
where he had turned the ground, okay? So you had maybe three to four feet from one side to the other side, total. So there were two rows, it says here. Hallelujah. And he arranged the wood and cut the ox in piece, pieces and laid it on the wood. And he said, fill four pitchers of water and pour it on the burnt offering of the wood and on the wood. And he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And that wasn't good enough. He said, I'm really going to show how God, my God can do. Do it a third time. And they did it a third time. And the water flowed so much and it filled up, it filled up the, 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 the trench where he had dug out. Okay? It filled that trench up. Man, they couldn't deny there was, that, that thing was soggy. Watered down. Of course, you know, you all, you all know if you, if you take a stew, if you take a crock pot and you put a, some beef in the crock pot, you know, pour some water in there and some fixings and stuff like that. You get a lot of moisture, a lot of, a lot of gravy. You get gravy out of and everything else, you know. One of my wife's favorite things to do. But, you know, so that steer, that ox was wet. The wood was soaked. The ground was soaked. Yep, the water flowed around the altar, and he also filled the trenches with water. There was no way a flame would start. You know what? Inside your heart, inside your heart, living in a crazy lifestyle that we used to live, we used to, I say, okay? That flame didn't start inside of our heart, it wouldn't start. It only had to be a spark from God that could change us. Take away all the garbage, all the trash, all everything else. Only that spark from God. All the time that we've been thinking, you know, this, that, and the other thing, it's only the spark, the light that came in. For all that he had done, cover up the fire with firewood with, wood, with water, seeing the prophets killed, seeing and waiting for the power of God to come manifest itself. Wow. And then, and then it happened. Then it happened. God started a fire not just in the wood not just burning the calf but he started a fire in the hearts of men yes lord he came and showed his power he changed their mind and they saw the glory of god ascend from heaven and start a fire a fire that baal could not do he couldn't even come close. He couldn't even, he couldn't even appear. A miracle of God in our life, working in our life. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Time flies when you have fun. Hallelujah. Turn to Kings 3, 19, 1 Kings. Okay, Hallelujah. First Kings 19, 3, 5. Now I'm going to sit down. We're going to have family time here as we go through this last little bit of scriptures. Amen. 19, 3, 5. All right. I was really... And wanting to kind of hoop and holler today, I had it in my heart. I guess I had this all. That's not what God wanted. It's not what God wanted. Amen. That's good. Hallelujah. 
Amen. After all that he had done, Elijah killed the prophets. He killed the prophets of Baal. After all that was done, he killed the prophets of Baal. Amen? But then there was a woman. Anybody know her name? Jezebel. She swore that she would kill him. A woman, after he had done, saw the miracle of God, saw the fire start, killed the prophets. One woman threatened his life and he ran. Now, within that story right there, I want to say that, that probably he was exhausted. They had been going from morning until late at night, their night, so from 6 o'clock in the morning roughly, when, when their first hour starts, at their hour time wise goes, until 9 o'clock the next in the evening. That was their day. If it got dark earlier, the day would end earlier. They didn't have street lights, they didn't have, you know. But he was probably exhausted. He was exhausted from, from, from mocking them. <laughs> you guys, look at you, your God wouldn't even answer you. You better shout louder. And I bet you he cracked up on the ground laughing when they started cutting themselves. I mean, you foolish people. Such foolishness. Your God hasn't even answered you. Why? You're going to cut yourself and, and you're going to think he's going to answer you? That's just your flesh. And what you're doing is you're cutting your flesh. Yeah. Yeah. I would have been laughing. I think I would have been. Because I wasn't afraid because I know my God. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid. Until until she spoke up and said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do away with you. And then he ran. Running away from your battles. <laughs> Running away from your battles. Lord Jesus, help us. It's not time to give up. It wasn't time for him to give up. I wonder what God really thought of that moment. God knew what he was going to do, okay? But even still knowing that here I answered everything you wanted done. You, you bought me glory. You revealed my love and my, my desire and my power. But yet now, you, run, you don't think I could have took care of you with her? You don't think I could have protected you with her? All right? You see, when we get tired, it's not that we get fearful, but sometimes we just don't feel like doing anything more at the moment. We don't feel like it. Sometimes we just <clears throat> say, I'm just done. I'm all done. And that's what he said. That's what Elijah said. Look at this. Let's go. Elijah was afraid. I mean, and he was afraid. Elijah was afraid. He rose and he ran for his life. And he came to Bathsheba, which belongs to Judah. And he left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. All right? Into the wilderness. And came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die. Now wait a minute. You just ran from the woman who's gonna kill you. Now you're over here in the wilderness. Now you're asking God to kill you. Even for a prophet, he was a little bit confused. He ran from death, but then he asked for death. 
Let that sink in for a moment. When you're tired and exhausted, sometimes you'll say some things that you just don't really mean, but they kind of sound good to you at the moment. When you're frustrated with somebody or some people, you'll sometimes say things that you should have not said. But now, here he was in the wilderness. He had dropped off the people that were with him. He went a days further into the wilderness and he wanted to die. I don't have an answer for that. I'm going to look for it, but I don't have an answer for that. I've met, and there's some theologians out there that have some answers that sound good. But I don't see a written answer for it right now. I don't, I don't see one right here. That he went from a man who was walking in the power and the glory of the God, of our God, to a man who doubted. From one extreme to depression. He thought he should die. The other prophets died. Maybe that was the answer in that he was feeling guilty because the other prophets died and he didn't. He was the only one, remember? It says here, I don't know if that's the answer or not, I just, I just put that out there. But he said to himself, he went a day's journey, journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under the juniper tree and he requested himself that he might die. He said, it is enough. I just really believe that he was just totally exhausted. And sometimes when you're exhausted, you just feel like giving up. Yep. When you've gone through so much pain or so much trial, so much tribulation, going through so many things, sometimes you just feel like, Lord, just, just end it, please. Take me home. Now, oh Lord, take me home. I had enough now. Oh Lord, take my life. For I am not better than my fathers. All of those who have died, all those who have gone on before me, I'm done. I'm finished. I have I have no no more gas in me. But it's time to rise up. It's time to rise up. When you're feeling that way, like we talked about at the very beginning, when you're feeling depressed, when you're feeling down and out, when you're feeling that, when that in that position, pray. All right? Don't try to hold on to your weight because the devil's trying to put weight on you. He's trying to convince you that you're not worthy. Look at this and that. I know better than my father's. He was thinking he was not worthy. He was becoming depressed. After all he has seen God do, and after all you have seen God do, don't let yourself become depressed. Don't let stop being trodden down on. Yes, your arms may be hurt. Yes, your back may be hurt. Yes, your knee may be hurt. Yes, 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 yes. But greater is he that's in me yes. than he that's in the world. And if I hold on to that truth, then there's no weapon formed against me that can prosper. So I may have aches and pains in my old age, or as I get older. I know some people are older than me, so you're like, oh, oh, no. As I get older, I may have a wrist that's hurting me. I may have a bad heart. I may have bad lungs, bad knees, whatever it may be. But I say rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Because God is with us. Amen. And who can be against us? Yes. Even our own flesh cannot stand against us. Hallelujah. I don't care if you got to pray and fast. Oh, Lord, I, Pastor, I can't fast. You know, I, you know. No, you can fast. I don't care how much you weigh or don't weigh, you can fast. But you can say, Lord, I'm giving this fast to you. I'm not putting away the food, but I'm putting away TV. I'm putting away all this other stuff. I'm letting go of all that stuff. 
and I'm putting my time into you. I'm going to pick up the Bible. I'm going to read and I'm going to pray. I'm going to read. 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 I'm going to pray. Okay. You can fast that way. All right. Why? Because you have to bring this flesh in submission. That's what fasting is about—to bring your flesh under submission. All right. So if you're getting depressed, if you're getting beat down, if you're just at your ropes in, fast. Fast. Put away stuff that, that you normally do every day. Hallelujah. Programs that you watch every day. Come on. Radio stations that you listen to. If you do TikTok or, or Facebook or whatever, put it away. Come on. Put on the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. Okay? Put on the breastplate. Put on the helmet of salvation. Pick up the sword, which is the word of God. This is our calling. This is our life. We've chosen it. We've said, yes, Lord. So we have to live it. It's not something we just come to church on Sunday or on Thursday. Or we turn on so and so on TV and watch them say, Oh, I had church today. No, you don't have church until you have a relationship with Jesus personally yep. every single day. Yep. Every single day it has to be a personal relationship with Jesus. I remember, I'm going to talk about somebody right now. I'm not going to say any names, but this person will know what I'm talking about. People go to the hospital. They go through a lot of problems, a lot of issues, a lot of situations. And when you go, you're caught up in all the stuff that's going on. The one thing you forget to do is to pray. The one thing you forget to do is to pick up the word and hear what God is speaking. It becomes easier to let go of it than to hold on to it because you're distracted by other things around you. I have been guilty of that. <coughs> it was easy to go to sleep. You lay there in bed. Instead of praying, the last time I was in the hospital for a length of time, I could have done better. I could have done better. I didn't need someone to come along and tell me, you all already know, see I'm pointing at myself, already know that I could have done better. And maybe you could point to yourself, and maybe not, maybe you did better than me. You know? That's not criticism. I'm trying to get us to think about how we react to things, how he reacted to it. He went to the wilderness and he wanted to die. Lord, kill me. Put me out of my misery. Yeah, you know, we can all get there. And maybe we've all been there. Times we're ready to give up. Just totally just say, you know, I'm, I'm done. Just like he, just like he did, I'm done. I, I'm, all, I'm all done. When you have a heart attack, it hurts so bad that you can't move your arm, you're just frozen. You can't talk because you had a stroke during that heart attack. Your mind's all gobbled up. You can't find the words. And you go someplace where you don't need to go. Just let me go. Take me home. I'm all done. Rise up. Rise up. Give him praise and give him glory. 
Rise up and honor the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Don't give in. Don't give up. Why? Because he's not done with you yet. When he's done with you, you'll go home. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But until that day, until that time, rise up. Rise up. Honor the Lord thy God. Say, Father, what is it you want of me? I know you're not done with me yet. I may be this age right now, but I know you're not done with me yet. Yeah, I've seen some great days behind me. But God, you're with me. So today is the greatest day of my life. Today I have victory. And as long as I have breath, I have victory. And when you take that breath away from me, God, to be absent from this body, doesn't matter. Because I'll be in the presence of the Lord. So rise up. Make the phone calls. Pray with people. Pray for yourself. Encourage yourself. Don't let the devil tell you that you're all done. Baal can't tell you nothing because he can't speak. So why do you want to listen to something that can't do nothing for you? Rise up. Hallelujah. It says here in verse 5, drop down to verse 5, and he lay down and slept under the juniper tree. And behold, there was an angel touching him and said to him, Arise and eat. Rise up. What are you doing? Time's going by. You got to work by the day. Because the night's coming. But nobody can work. Rise up. <laughs> Drop down to verse 18. God's talking to Elijah. Because Elijah had gone through and said, well, I'm the only one. I'm the only one. <laughs> God says, who do you think you are? You know, I will leave. Yet I, yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, and all their knees have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth has not kissed him. God always has someone. He always has someone, and that someone, guess what, is you. That someone is Mary, is Helen, is Lori, is TJ, is Evelyn. Oh, you too. <laughs> Edwin. You know, it keeps on going. Bastard. The saints of God, he has us. And it's more than 7,000. 7,000 was just a starting point. Just in the day of Pentecost, he added 3,000. He's always, always, always got somebody. And aren't you glad that he's got you? Rise up. Rise up and give him the praise and the glory. Rise up and show people what Jesus has done for you and what he's willing to do for them. Family members living in sin, going crazy. Rise up. Tell them the truth. I don't care how many no's you get. If you love them, you want them saved. Rise up. Be bold. Call upon that name above all names. The name of Jesus. 
Rise up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. I'm going to pray. The devil's going to bring the offering basket around. I'm going to pray first. Huh? Gonna pray for them. Okay. Okay. Amen. So we'll add them in this prayer of Thanksgiving. Father God, if you bring the tithe and offering to you, Father God, we we bring it, Father God, out of our joy of our heart, Father God. For you love a joyful giver, Father God. Father, you've given us so much. You have done so much. It is time for us to rise up. To rise up and reach out and touch someone. Father, we thank you as we come now humbly before you, Father God. We ask for your healing touch with Paulette and Dave. Touch their bodies right now, Father God. Father, they need your strength, Father. So that they may rise up. That they may, one more time, press in. One more time, Father God, to get their family saved. One more time, Father God, to show your love. We call all of those here and those who are watching to rise up. You don't have to go to church to rise up, but you do have to rise up and do what God's called you to do. We would hope that you would come to church so you can sit with family time and talk and enjoy the Lord. That we could pray for one another, encourage one another. Hallelujah. That we could be on one accord. It's time to rise up. And today as we bring our tithes and offerings into the storehouse, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the abundance you have given to us. We ask, Lord, that you touch each and every one spiritually, physically, and financially, Father God. We thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Take it around. Hallelujah. Rise up. Rise up. <coughs> Thank you, Pastor Corwin. <coughs> We've got a few minutes left. Sniffles over there. I think you need some more Kleenex. <laughs> There's something there. Can you give me? He's, he's, he's got it. Okay. Keep him, keep Pastor in prayer. Keep me in prayer. Sister Lori, keep her in prayer. She got sniffles. You know, I didn't make nobody cry today. But, you know, but <laughs> we got sniffles. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You, you got anything you want to say, D? Well, well, a little question. You know how you say it during family time? Yep. Um, if I can't answer it, Edward will. Okay. <laughs> you don't have it, I have it. Lord will, no matter who answers. Well, the question that I wanted to answer, ask was, um, who fooled the prophets of Baal that caused 450 men to cut themselves, that he gushed out? And then I, as I was thinking these things, that tells me they had great faith in Baal. You know, they had great faith in them. That they were willing to cut themselves. Uh -huh. So, and we obviously know that Baal was faithful. He was, you know, they believed in him. 
but he wasn't a real God, you know. Right. Because you know, there's only one God. Right. And Jesus. And so, but they had so much faith in Baal that they were willing to cut themselves. Uh -huh. So from their beginning of their existence, however they got into the prophethood, they cut themselves so full of these guys, you know. Because yeah. somewhere along the line, some somebody must have told them of this great God Baal <laughs> that performed all these that that they really thought that fire was gonna come down, you know. And, it takes more faith to believe in nothing than to believe in something. They believed in nothing so much that they go ahead and cut themselves and do all kinds of things. That's not what our God asks of us. He says, believe, and thou shalt be saved. Right. All right? So, you know, within our belief system is things that we are to do get baptized in the name of Jesus, okay? All right? To pray and put on the armor of God, the things we're supposed to do. But we don't go around killing or cutting ourselves and stuff like that. That's not God. See, when people don't have an answer, they'll create an answer. And from the very beginning of time, this is my opinion, Man has had a void inside of him. Okay? They want to fill that void. So they saw a big. Uh, 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 Try to worship everything. Yeah, they, they saw a big uh, um, uh, dinosaur. You know? They started working with it. They saw how much more. It's like, okay, well, he's just an everyday thing. They started seeing things going on that, that they related that was God, and they started making things into God. All right? So someplace along the way, they made a statue of Baal. And they said, this is Balaam. He's the God of whatever. I don't happen to know that, what he was the God of. He's God, you know, because Egypt, they had like three or four gods. Three gods. <laughs> At, at a time, at a time, uh -huh. they, they had they had a sun god, they had a water god, they had an earth god. Okay, most all uh, 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 cultures have those three gods: a sun god, okay, an earth god, and a water god. That's their basics. Every culture. I'm sure that you could ask Pastor, what's his name? Corwin. <laughs> his tribal, his tribe probably has three different basic gods, traditional gods that they worshiped. Is that true, maybe? Just the one? He's in a maze, so he's, he's walking. Walking through life in a maze. Okay, so they use the red and yellow powders and stuff like that. You know. <clears throat> well, crystals. I think crystals shine out there. You know, there's maybe those many gods. Yeah, okay. So different different areas believe in different things, right? Or more Christians do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we always have, we always want to fill that void with something. And Baal for them was their void being filled. Probably someplace along the way something happened. This is my own opinion. Okay. Maybe they thought it was a miracle. They prayed to this the statue they made, and maybe something happened. Maybe a baby was dying. And they prayed and the baby didn't die. They thought it was going to die, but it didn't die. Oh, this God answered our prayer. You know, they went, boom, gone, okay? Yeah. Something like that. It happened with the Aztecs, the lunar eclipse. Yeah. It happened at a certain time. They were doing something. And, uh, yep. It was just coincidence. Right. That was, that was a sign. Right. Something happens only once every 100 years or 50 years or whatever. 
But yeah, I mean, you know, we, we uh, uh, it takes more faith to not believe in God than it does to believe in God. It takes an awful lot of faith to say that we had a big bang and everything came together and they can't explain anything. And all knowing God created all things for the purpose of design, a designer of the universe. So it's, you know, it, it, but it takes harder to hold on to that type of faith if you don't, you know, the Big Bang or, or whatever it may be. I worship that car. Oh, I want that, that car. Yeah, that had to be a God. Like you said, you likely to really seek after signs and wonders. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, it, the, the, the whole thing behind it is, is this is that when we talked about, I said earlier about movies and stuff like that, we, have, we see all kinds of things like, wow, that's amazing, right? That's amazing. Well, ignorance of people consider that a miracle that something like that happened. It's a miracle that they discovered that there's life in the blood. Well, the Bible told us that there's life in the blood thousands of years ago. Now they discovered it in 18 something, 1800 something. That wow, we don't need to bleed people, okay? That was their, their tradition. To heal people, they would cut them to bleed them. If they live, they live. If they die, they die. Oh. They thought they could drain the poison out of them. You good? Any other questions? Um, you know, G, um, Paul talks. Paul talks about it this way: that um, if you don't. Go to God, you, you turn over to a he, God allows you to turn over to a reprobate mind. And ch the children of Israel at that time stopped worshiping God, stopped believing in God, so He allowed them to go over to a reprobate mind, to think in, in the flesh, to think carnally, to do things that were unseemly and ungodly. That's actually what, what, what happened there. Uh, why they went to worshiping Bell and stuff is because they stopped believing in God, stopped worshiping God. And so God allowed them to go the way they wanted to go. That's why when he asked them and they couldn't answer a word, that's because they couldn't answer a word because their mind was fouled up because of um, they stopped believing in God. You gotta remember that, that uh, I don't worship has been around forever, as long as God's been around. Yep. You know, I mean, man just had to worship something, and they didn't know to worship God. You know, now that's why Jesus told us to go out in the highways, go up into the world, okay, go out every creature, all right, spread the good news, because there's people who don't know. Even right. still today, there's people who do not know Jesus. Right here in the United States, they take Jesus' name in vain, but they don't know Jesus. They've never, you know, kids don't, Jesus, they, they have no clue. Because no one's told them. <clears throat> no one's taken time to say, you know what, there's something more important than you hang around gangs and doing all this X, Y, and Z. I heard this, you mean that man on the cross? Yeah, they, they have no understanding. They don't know it, don't understand it. Right. So we will make for ourselves prop. We will make for ourselves idols and gods in our own image, in our own likeness, because we are made in the image and likeness of God. But we think that we are somebody, and because we think that we are somebody, it's a lot of problems. You think you want to say, Pastor? Um, I, I just think of uh, the people that are in India. Yes, yeah, six million gods. They have so many gods. They have so many gods that they're uh, uh, the king. Don't you think? They have so many gods. I know it's something you're in. That's uh, Iceland. Oh, that's Iceland. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor. Uh, they have so many gods and. Uh, uh, they, they, uh, they, I think they're paranoid 
because they want to be able to, you know, to want, you know, <laughs> they want to make it in one way or another. You know what I mean? Like, uh, well, if, if this one don't work, that one might work. And right. If that one don't work, this one might work. And so if I get, if I get, you know, if, if I miss one, I have the other, you know. And uh, we had uh, missionaries that, that went over to India and we tell them, you know, hey, uh, do you know Jesus? Yeah, well, we'll carry this, we'll carry a picture of Jesus and all these things. But like Pastor said, we don't, we don't really know, you know, <clears throat> they don't really know, they don't really know Jesus, you know. And uh, uh, Matthew says, well, Jesus asked the question, who do you say that I am? You know, it, it, it's a personal thing that that we have, you know, like like like, like uh, Elijah, he he, he, he preached, uh, like he prayed, excuse me, he prayed, and it was a personal thing. He said, "Lord, let them know that there's a God." Amen. Let them know that there's uh, there's you know, you know, let them know, let the fire fall, you know. So he had to show them that there is a God. And many times, by the way, we live our life and by the way, you know, you know, people will know our God, our Savior, you know. They'll know, they'll know who he is and, and what we stand for. Amen. That's why Paul, uh, when he came and saw, come to some people, uh, they were worshiping their gods and they had a one that was an unknown God. Okay? Yeah. And so Paul says, look at this is this is who we're talking about. The unknown God is, is God. He's the real God. It's the way you're supposed to be worshiping. You know, he had the opportunity to open the door for him to explain who God was. And now we had that same opportunity for throughout the whole world. Your whole world is your apartment complex. All those people that aren't saved don't go to church. How many people have you talked to? I mean, really try to engage them in a conversation about God. So, you know, that's the question. You know, people are dying. <coughs> people are dying. We need to rise up. The church needs to rise up. We need to tell people about Jesus. Uh, all right, I'm all done. I'm, I'm getting really stuffed up here, so let's pray out. Everyone, pray us out real quick, quick. <laughs> Lord God Almighty, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us understanding from you, for teaching us today, for feeding us. Now, Lord, as we go on our way, Lord, keep each and every one of us safe. We thank you, Lord, for that. We pray for all those who are sick and going through hardships and struggles. We pray for their health, their strength, their healing. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God that delivers and takes care of all of us. Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We'll see you all tonight. Yep, 6.30 for all those who are watching. Uh, I think it's uh, Pastor Crystal's preaching tonight, I think. Maybe. 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 Okay, so uh, <laughs> between the two of them, they'll figure it out. See how tired she is. Amen. And uh, come and join us at 6.30 here at 725 East Bay Time Road, Gilman, Arizona. We'd be honored to have you all. And we thank you for watching. We thank you for your, your comments. I didn't get to comments on, online. But you still leave comments, uh, and I will try to get back and leave an answer to them for you. All right? Lord bless you all. Amen. Six minutes away. All right. So, we'll take you home. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not going home. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can take her to lunch, too. Don't let the Lord be. Uh, where you go? Where you go to the bathroom? Yeah. Let the Lord be. You got okay? You want me to help you? Oh, no, go the other way.
Cameras on. You know what? I'm the same way.